UV rays from the sun are hard on tires. Considering the amount of time most of our trailers spend parked, investing in tire covers is money well spent. Check tire pressures using a proper gauge. Remember that some tire gauges, sold for use with cars and light pickups, only read to 50 pounds per square inch, which may not be adequate for your trailer tires. The tires on this trailer require 65 pounds per square inch, so the gauge on the left wouldn't be sufficient. The gauge on the right, that reads to 120, is suitable. Another worthwhile investment is a torque wrench. Before setting out on every trip, check the lug nut torque on all the wheels. Check the manufacturer's specs to be certain. Typically 90 to 100 foot-pounds is a fairly common setting. Plan A for trailering is the trailer hitch and coupler assembly. The mud flaps are an optional add-on. They're not necessary, but they're nice to keep the road spray and stone chips off the front of the trailer. It's very important that a horse trailer and tow vehicle be level when they're coupled together. I've parked the truck and trailer in this configuration to simulate a nose-high stance. In addition to being uncomfortable for our horses, who have to travel standing on an uphill slope for the duration of their journey, this is a concern for two other reasons. The majority of horse trailers are fitted with rubber torsion axles, and these give a smooth ride and a low floor height. With torsion axles, there is no equalization between the two axles. In this configuration here, all the weight on this trailer is being carried on the rear axle only. This can lead to overloading of the tire, wheel and hub and also means that the lead axle when the brakes are applied is going to lock up and skid causing tire damage. As you can see the front axle is not carrying any weight at all with the trailer riding nose high. Draw bars are available in a wide range of heights to suit different tow vehicles. If you've recently purchased a, a different truck, it may be necessary to purchase a different draw bar to get back to a level ride height for your trailer. All components in the hitch system must be rated equal to or greater than the gross vehicle weight of the towed vehicle. Our example trailer has a gross vehicle weight of 8,050 pounds. The hitch on the truck itself is rated for 12,500. This draw bar has a 10,000 pound rating, and so does the trailer ball. If you do have to replace the trailer ball, make sure you buy one with an equal rating. 2 and 5 16 trailer balls are available at fairly low ratings, as low as 6,000 pounds. Always use the manufacturer's supplied pin to secure the draw bar into the vehicle's hitch assembly. Do not substitute an old bolt or a piece of round bar because this is also a rated component and part of the hitch system. And always remember to secure the pin in place with the snap pin provided.
with the trailer coupler lowered onto the hitch and the hitch carrying all the weight, the coupler should close easily. If it's necessary to force the trailer coupler closed, it probably isn't connected properly. Once the coupler is closed, immediately install the safety pin so you don't forget. This series of components, the tow vehicle hitch, the drawbar, the trailer hitch ball, and the trailer coupler are all part of the main hitch system, which I consider to be plan A. Safety chains are plan B. If plan A fails, safety chains are there to keep the trailer connected to the tow vehicle. Safety chains are rated for the purpose. Most horse trailer manufacturers supply at least a 3 8 grade 70 chain, which is adequate. The chain and the hook should both be rated the same. The hook should also have spring-loaded safety catches on them to ensure they can't come detached while traveling. Always connect the chains to the proper connection point on the hitch. There should be no twists in the chains. Chains are not designed to be side-loaded, they're designed to work in tension. And twisting a chain to shorten it could cause the chain to fail if the safety chains had to come into play. Safety chains should be crossed so that they form a cradle under the hitch. If the trailer was to become detached, it would drop into that cradle. Always install safety chains with the safety catch down. This ensures that all of the weight will be borne by the hook in the event that the safety chains have to come into use. Plan C, in the event of complete failure of both the hitch and the safety chains, is the trailer breakaway system. This system is intended to prevent the trailer from becoming an unguided missile if it completely breaks free from the tow vehicle. When the switch is activated, the trailer brakes are applied and they will bring the trailer to a halt. Because this breakaway system is designed to be used in the event of complete failure of both the primary and the backup hitch systems, it should be attached to a point on the tow vehicle that is completely independent of any trailer hitch components. A common mistake seen is people attaching the breakaway switch to a link on the safety chain. With the breakaway switch connected like this, in the event of a complete failure of the tow vehicle hitch assembly, the safety chains would come off with the hitch and the trailer breakaway system would not be activated. On this tow vehicle, a steel eye bolt has been added to, an, to a pre-existing hole on the bumper bracket and this attachment point is completely independent of the hitch and the safety chains. Ensure that the trailer jack is fully raised so it can't come in contact with any high spots in the roadway. Connect the electrical cord, ensuring there's enough slack for trailer swing when cornering. Make sure it's securely connected and check operation of all lights. To test breakaway system operation, manually activate the switch and move the trailer forward to see if the brakes are holding. Truck and trailer are now fully connected. We're riding good and level. We're ready to load and travel.